dear friends, we are in Stein, St. Petersburg University, on the Department of Pomor, Polar and Marine Science. And today we have a have a great guest, uh, Mr. Hans from the from Germany, from Rostock City. Can you introduce just in short yourself from which university you are? And okay, I'm I'm from the Policy Research Institute uh, Warnemünde. Um, and I'm a physical oceanographer, and I'm the teacher at Pomor uh, uh, these days, and I'm, I'm teaching coastal ocean dynamics. And this is the experiment how uh, a major Baltic inflow event happens in the Baltic Sea. Okay, this is a great model, and today we will discuss a typical salinity distribution along the Baltic Sea. Um, as you can see, this is a profile of the bottom of the Baltic Sea, yes. Yeah. And uh, as I understand, so that um, this is more a model for the um, area of the Strait, the Dutch Straits, yes, when salinity come, uh, comes to the Baltic Sea. Yeah, I mean, this would be kind of the, the area of the Danish Straits. Basically, this is a dark hill, the major hill under the Baltic Sea here. And, 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 but this would be the major basin of the Baltic Sea, the, the, the western, uh, sorry, the, the eastern Cotland Basin. And when we study how salt comes from here, from yeah. the North Sea, into the central Cotland Sea. This is salt. <laughs> we add in the water. Don't be too careful. Put more. Put a lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then we mixed. It's a really strong. Turbulence appear, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to stir in order to mix. Because otherwise, we would have to wait, wait far too long to get it mixed. Mm. If uh, water will be warmer, it uh, will be a quicker, yes? I don't know, uh, yeah. probably yes. Probably yes. Mm. It is pretty cold. Mm. So this is all fresh water from the tap. St. Petersburg fresh water from tap. And this is now salt water. I think that is enough. No. Well, your video would become okay. too boring, I think, if you are yeah. mixing too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we add oil. <laughs> it is rope. Uh, ink. What ink? Yeah. Ink. It is ink. It's all yeah, in ink. ink. Yeah. That should no, be enough. Yeah, it's all. Uh, close for you. And you have to mix again, I guess. The ink is used to mark the salt water. So all fresh water now in this uh, basin is um, is uh, uh, transparent, and all salt water is blue. Uh, yes, and uh, as I understand from the great lecture, uh, the salinity water uh, become to the fresh, and owing to the different uh, density, yes, of salinity water and fresh water, um, it is moving uh, towards the bottom. Uh, why, I why is it moving? I think uh, that it is a uh, difference in pressure, yes, the main uh, strange. Yes, I mean, at the bottom, yeah, um, you have the strongest uh, pressure uh, due to the weight of the water column. And, and so at the bottom you will get strong inflow, but at the surface you will get some outflow because after you have filled the Baltic Sea a little bit, the sea level will increase in the Baltic Sea and push back some of the water. Such that you get a uh, classical exchange flow. I think we can see that we yeah, lift this vowel here. Move. Just remove it. Disc. Yeah, quicker. And now you have a major Baltic 
inflow event. What you see here in a few seconds is in reality taking something like a couple of months. Um, and you see that now the central Baltic Sea is filled with saline water. What you also see is that, that some of the saline water is actually staying in the basins. This would be the Arcona Basin, this would be the Bornholm Basin, Stolper Channel and, and Eastern Gotland Basin. And you see that the salinity arriving in the central Gotland Basin is much, much lower than actually the salinity of the inflowing water. You know? And what you have uh, uh, remaining here, remaining in the um, Bornholm Basin is something like uh, water at um, medium salinity. And could you explain, please, uh, the importance uh, of this factor? Uh, as I, I know, um, this factor plays uh, a big role because uh, it is very important for fishermen, yes, because uh, population of cod fish uh, depends on the salinity, yes? And uh, yes. as I know, salinity, uh, water masses become uh, to the Baltic Sea from the North Sea. Uh, like maybe one or two times per ten years, yes? Yes, uh, such inflow events kind of happen um, every ten years um, and, and uh, of course one effect is to bring salt into the Baltic Sea but this is not the major ecological effect also for the codfish. The, the major effect is actually that you bring um, oxygen into the central Woodland Basin because let's say um, the central Baltic Sea is permanently stratified. So there's dense water at the bottom and less dense water at the surface. So the direct exchange of oxic waters at the surface with bottom waters is uh, not possible, uh, basically. And since you have um, a lot of primary production here in the surface layers, you get a lot of organic material kind of raining down, falling down to the bottom. And there it is just mineralized by bacteria using up oxygen so that uh, very quickly the oxygen in the deeper basins of the, 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 the Baltic Sea is depleted, uh, leading to um, very low oxygen concentrations or zero oxygen concentrations and, and, and concentration, high concentrations of hydrogen sulfide, so kind of not allowing any, any higher life uh, down there. So these 250 meters of exchange are impossible due to physics. So the only way to bring oxygen down here is a long way from the North Sea, which is uh, oxygenated due to um, a, a very strong uh, mixing, and, and you get the, the oxygenized water in here. So the color here could also mean something like oxygen for a second, right? But then immediately once the, 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 the central Baltic Sea is oxygenized, um, oxygen uh, consumption will go on and immediately after you have a maximum oxygen concentration here it will already uh, decrease again. And one moment, uh, could you explain please uh, the main factors that just in short, uh, in brief, which can influence uh, on this process uh, more efficiently? For example, I know waves, yes, wind power, uh, maybe upwelling and downwelling can Okay, let's say, um, um, I mean, there's a um, reduction of um, exchange between North Sea waters and Baltic Sea waters just because um, it is so shallow and so narrow in, in, in the Western Baltic Sea. And um, let's say if you would build many, many wind farms, offshore wind farms in this area, if you build many, many bridges or even dams there, then you would, of course, um, reduce the potential exchange. So with all constructions you do, are doing in the Western Baltic Sea, you have to uh, try to find out and assess the, the influence on, on this exchange. Right? And of course there, there's also uh, thoughts about how to increase the ventilation of the central Baltic Sea. And, and, and one interesting approach is from Stiegebrand, Professor Stiegebrand from Gothenburg in Sweden. He thought, okay, he puts um, Lots of water from the surface, which is oxygenated by big pumps into the deeper water, you know, and, and, and just ventilate artificially the deeper waters here in order to uh, improve the, the oxygen situation. And the energy for this pumping 
he would take from wind power. That's a fantasy project, and, and uh, I don't think it would be ever realized, but this is um, showing how eager uh, people are to actually um, solve this problem. Of course, another, I mean, the problem is partially man-made. The problem of oxygen efficiency here in the central Baltic Sea is, is man-made. Of course, it is natural that you have primary production in, in the surface layers of the Baltic Sea, but due to agriculture and industry, we are putting a huge amount of nutrients into the Baltic Sea, and therefore the production of the uh, Baltic Sea is much, much higher than natural. So, uh, therefore, also the, I mean, the sinking of organic material into the central Baltic Sea is much um, higher than natural, and therefore the oxygen depletion and consumption is, is much higher than natural. So one way, of course, to improve the situation is to put less nutrients into the, uh, the Baltic Sea. But if we now start stop nutrient supply, say, in the Baltic Sea, it will still last something like 30, 40 years or whatever to get some more uh, natural conditions. Sorry, one small request. Could you demonstrate the situation of storm surges in uh, the Baltic Sea or other oscillations of level? Of course, of course. <laughs> For example, a little bit of wind. Wind is blowing. And what are we got? Yes, some of that. Yes. You see an interesting phenomenon now. I mean, more sailor water is actually entering here, this Bornholm Basin, uh, going to the bottom and then pushing up the old water, right? So the new water is not directly flushing uh, further into the central Baltic Sea, but first the new water is replacing the old water, and the old water is lifted over the sill. That's also one interesting process you, you can see here by just this uh, storm cell. So in reality, um, wh what we are missing here is, of course, freshwater runoff is one thing we, we are missing here. Um, uh, the unlimited size, almost unlimited size of the world ocean here with a huge salt reservoir is missing here. Um, and of course, what we are missing here is wind. So typically, there's wind all the time and, and, and mixing, so it's highly intermittent. The sea levels between the Baltic Sea and the North Sea are changing all the time, um, such that uh, what we see here is highly idealized and in and, and, and reality it's, it's relatively and highly variable what, what's going on here. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hans. Uh, he is from Rostock City, from Germany. Uh, this was a great video and here is mathematical <laughs> equation. <laughs> if you know something in mathematical, in mathematics, you can see this and uh, be very, um, I don't know, satisfied. <laughs>